Hey everyone, Brendan Center here. How are you? Got What's up? Good, good friend Anthony. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. And a uh, new series here that we're doing called Sound Selections. I gave oh, it a title. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's pretty good. We were debating that yesterday. Yep, yep. I put Thank that you. one together. I actually opened it up to uh, a lot of the viewers out there and let them comment on things. And while I didn't end up going with one of those titles, they really did help get, uh, you know, sort of the creative ideas flowing through the mind. And I was able to pick and choose and kind of go through things. And at least for now, we're going to call this Sound Selections. Yeah, I'm so, into it. All right, what's the first one up that uh, you want to suggest? All to right, us? man. Record I love is The Temptations with a lot of soul. This is an this is an original mono copy. Doesn't matter, get mono stereo unless you have a preference for them. Another band that mm -hmm. we discussed before where you know the hits, mm -hmm. but every song on this album kicks. It's a it's a great yeah. record. All right. Very cool. Something different there. Uh, and I'm going to jump to the complete opposite extreme of that. Sabotage. French sabotage. No, <laughs> I only just found this out the uh, yesterday when I was reading uh, more on it. Um, sabotage is a combination of um, the night and the power, Savage, and Avatar, the band's original name. But then they didn't like uh, that Savitar. it was Avatar, so they dropped it and added the GE on it to come up with Sabotage. So it's like a real name that means absolutely nothing. Oh shit! You know what I mean? Like they they had a, a way that they were combining it to do get it, it to create That's it, pretty and cool. then they just changed so much that eventually it doesn't mean anything. But they said they loved how it sounded. That's and they loved the way that the S was when they did it. They said they wanted to put a big kiss. Savitar S. You guys have but, the new Savitar record? Yeah, I like that though. I like Savitar. Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> it's different. If you're, you're a cover group of Sabotage, you can be Savitar. Savitar. Holy shnikes! Yeah, right. But uh, most of you guys probably know who Sabotage is. They eventually morph into Trans-Siberian Orchestra, yep. right? But this album here, Power of the Night, Power of the Night, is actually their second album. Really, really good stuff, in my opinion. Love digging into that. Uh, John Oliva, the front man, lead vocalist in there, just has a way of singing that's just eerie. And okay. Yet, yet, yet I, I disagree with Very it. good vocalist. So it's like he's a metal vocalist, very good vocalist, but it's just dark and it's eerie. Dark. Yeah. I like it. I just one of the things that always always grabs me about the band. Was it remember the movie Critters? Yeah. All right. I have the clock in my house. I can't remember. Johnny something. Oh. Wasn't his song Power of the Night? I have a Critters oh. clock from if you watch the movie Critters. I don't know. The guy that the one guy stole his face from right? was the rock guy. And I believe the song was Power of the Night. I can't oh. remember his freaking name. Shit. I saw Crit Critters is like available to stream on Netflix or something. I'm gonna have to. No, I gotta watch it tonight. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, gonna have to watch movie. that. Yeah, I haven't seen that since What's I was power the probably night, uh, yeah. you know, a little kid. You got the power of the night. There you go. <laughs> this is much better, but <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how it went. Anyway, watch Critters, and you'll see. Right. Next one up. All right. Joe Strummer to Mescalero oh, Street Core. This is very good. I'd recommend this too. This is just a, a cool. This is a heavy record. Not heavy musically right, like you right, would think. Right. It's just, man. That always got me when I would have people, someone, um, I was I was in, you know, this was, um, I don't know, late 80s, early 90s, very much in a Motley crew and stuff. And an older guy worked in a music store, kept telling me that Lou Reed, Blue Mask was the heaviest album out there. Like, you want something heavy? Listen to that. Of course, I listened to that and I was like, this isn't heavy it's not at heavy. all. But years later, I you understood. understood heavy now. Yes, now I understood what he yeah. meant by that. But I'm like, you can't tell a, a teen, you know, 14 year old kid or something who's listening to Motley Crue, Doctor Feelgood, that Lou Reed is heavy. Yeah, it's least, just not the same. If thing. you put on Far Beyond Driven, and yeah. the minute that riff opens, it stops you in your tracks because right. it's massive. Right, that's heavy. Right, this is heavy in a different I, it's way. A, I can't explain it. Yeah. but this is uh, it's just this is a great record, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Finished after he passed. Oh, I didn't know that. They, I mean, they purposely went for a rock and roll sound on mm -hmm. this album. Something a little more straightforward. Mm -hmm. And I believe they got it, man. So check this out. Joe Sherman and Mescaleros. Street core. Street core. All right. Um, all right. We're going to go uh, backwards into some sort of glam metal, I guess, if you will. Don Dockin solo album. I was listening to a lot of Dockin and just uh, Up From The Ashes. Doesn't really get as much love as the non Dockin uh, material does, but what I like about this and tie in from last week is that George Lynch isn't on it. <laughs> that's true, George Lynch isn't on it. That's a cool but record. John Norum, yeah, man, who I was talking about last week, plays lead guitar on this, and also uh, Mickey D, 
who yep. Motorhead, but then has gone on to Scorpions, plays on this. So it's a really cool backing band that's on here and just a great album. Yeah. I pull this out more than any of the Dokken albums and listen to this. What if they did the next Dokken album? What if they just finished Dokken's career out with that lineup? Imagine Mickey oh. D, John Norm, and Don Dokken, and who cares who plays bass? Oh, that would be awesome. I'd, I could totally go for that. Lemmy. Yeah, Lemmy comes back <laughs> from the dead. <laughs> he, he, was a, he was a closet Dokken fan his whole yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> I've always closet. wanted to do this, guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be cool. Maybe up in heaven. <laughs> that would be awesome. We got, shit, we got shit to look Lemmy. forward to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. You and I are going to be sitting in a bar somewhere in heaven drinking club soda, begging Lemmy to play with Dokken. <laughs> right, exactly. Come on, dude. Trust us. Trust us. <laughs> Get that lineup back together. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Fucking the afterlife's going to be cool. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Think of all the bands that'll be up there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. My last recommendation. Okay. Mark Lanigan Band. Blue's Funeral. Nice. Another record. This is this is heavy. This is massive. <laughs> because there's heavy riffs in here if you're okay. thinking heavy like that. Like Queens of the Stone Age heavy? No, man. This is cooler. No. Fucking heavier. Right? I mean, he played with, with Queens. He did. Briefly. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. I'm yeah. throwing that out there. This is uh this is and Mark is all Mark was a proponent of this record, mm -hmm. almost defining him. He always went back to this record, yeah. saying I need to make a record this good again, and it's really somebody needs to make a record this good again. I don't think they're gonna even if it's not your favorite record. Yeah, it's just it's a fucking masterpiece. What's the title of this one? This is Blues Funeral. Blues Funeral. And the cover is pretty wild too. Oh, man. absolutely. Right? And then you got him to sign it. Yeah, yeah, Mark was cool. He used to hang out after all the gigs, man, and yeah. sign anything. So nice. when this came out in 2012, mm -hmm. I saw him for the first time. Ten years ago. Um, yeah, at Theater of Living Arts in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised. There was a sign written on a piece of cardboard mm -hmm. that said, Mark will be hanging out and signing your stuff after the gig. I, I went there. <laughs> I already had the record. Right. But when I went there, he was selling it. So I said, I, now I have to wait. I'm going to buy another copy right. because there's no way I'm leaving without Mark Lanigan signing Same. my record. Yeah. And over the years, the only reason this doesn't say to Anthony is because uh -huh. I didn't know if you were allowed to. In uh -huh. my eyes, I'm staring at Mark Lanigan, yeah. and he's fucking cool enough to sign this for me, right? Right. right. So, do you like it when they personalize? To you? I think I yeah I do because I'm yeah. I'm not I'm, I'm having not, it signed for monetary value. Right. I'm never having it signed for monetary value, but I don't like having my name on it or the thank you. So I'm growing yeah. out of that. I'm yeah, I just pure. want the purity of the signature. Lanigan, yeah. everything you ever signed for me after this yeah. has two Anthony. Ah, cool. I would have I would show up at shows with multiple Lanigan things, but I wouldn't ask him to do that. My friends who would come to the show with me because I would drag them. <laughs> uh, usually kicking and screaming until they had their first Lanigan experience and then they were sold. But they would wait in line, and mm -hmm. it would, you know, there'd be sometimes four or five of us, and he would just smile when he got to me. He's like, "Let me guess." <laughs> <laughs> and it just, it, you yeah. know, it was cool, man. It was a, a swell guy, and uh, this is a, a killer record. Mark Lanigan, Blues Funeral. Very good. This would be number one of all of my three today. Okay, and adding in the last three from from previous week. Still number one? This stays in my top five of all-time records. Top, top five of all yeah. time. Very good. Yeah. All right. Well, that should sell it right then and there. Just the lyrics to Gravedigger song alone. The minute you put that song on and that riff comes and it, it just it punctures your lung and, you know, then the lyrics hit you mm -hmm. and then you just can't breathe anymore because now your other lung is punctured. <laughs> and you're bleeding into yourself. It's fucking miserable. And, and then, then you it's realize awesome. it's a great album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's on the way to go. Yeah. All right, wrapping it up, my uh, third one, uh, going away from the metal and glam metal to Lindsey Buckingham, guitarist for Fleetwood Mac, solo album, uh, Out of the Cradle. Yeah, man. this one. Very good. Uh, best Fleetwood Mac material that he never recorded I with know. Fleetwood Mac. I mean, it's 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 one of those things like, I, I'm a, I enjoy his stuff with Fleetwood Mac, but never really a big fan of his solo material. Until he released a Fleetwood yeah. Mac record without and, the rest of Mac. Right, and then I heard this here, and it was like, ah, oh, this is what I've been waiting for for him to do. And uh, yeah, I can't say any good, you know, enough good stuff about this album here. Just absolutely cool love it. If you are a fan of his time with Fleetwood Mac, Out of the Cradle is the way to go on that. Yeah. So there you go, we got some... Uh, got our, got our shit got, in there. Yeah, you got some soul stuff in there and got some... We did the soul, we did yeah. the punk rock, and then we did the the good measure. Yep, and I added in some uh, traditional metal, some glam metal, and straight up rock. Yeah. So uh, a little bit of it's everything there for you, no matter uh, what kind of music fan you are. Hopefully you found something within that. Yeah. And uh, stick around and uh, 
catch the next episode of this. Let music make you feel good. Ooh, music always makes me feel good. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Thank you very much. See ya.